Hey guys, welcome back to another M1 Pro video. Today we're gonna to be looking at how it performs in Blender. Now, I got asked this a bunch and I do use Blender myself for certain things, so I figured it made sense. So we're gonna split this video up into kind of three sections. The first section being a benchmark. So I did run the Blender benchmark with the M1 Pro, see how that performed. We're also gonna open one of the uh, sort of like scenes that you can download for free off Blender. These are really taxing on a lot of machines. So we're gonna look at how that performs in viewport as well as rendering it out a little bit. And then we're also gonna do a more real world example. So how I use Blender and how it performs doing tasks that I use it for. And I think that's the most important one of the three, but we're gonna do them all anyway. But before we jump into it, if you guys would love to hit that red button down below and subscribe to the channel, that'd be great. But yeah, so let's jump in and have a look at the benchmark results. So here we have the benchmark, and as you can see, it read, rendered this scene, the classroom scene, in 12 minutes and 58 seconds, and we're really right up the top here, and you don't want it to be at the top. You want low, lower is better, obviously, the faster it renders the scene. And so it doesn't look fantastic, but when you do scroll down, it actually does put it top 82% of the benchmarks, which isn't a good thing. It it basically means we're, you know, we're one of the slowest here. I will say that Blender hasn't been fully built around these new systems yet. Apple did just sign up for the, like, the development fund or something, or something, so I figured this is gonna get better over time. But yeah, we're looking 12 minutes, 58 seconds. Not fantastic. It's comparable to like a relatively new i5 to like an i9 from a few years ago. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But like I said, not super important. Benchmarks are completely synthetic and I don't like them because they just do not replicate real world results. So let's take a look how it actually performs when using scenes in Blender. Okay, so we'll open up the Blender file. Cool, so here you have it. Now in this particular mode where nothing is shaded and it's just like solid objects, it, you know, it works really well. Super easy to just move around the scene, zoom in, out, no lag, press play. You see here, it plays at 24 frames a second. I mean, that was to be expected. I also got very similar results on the M1. So the difference is when I go to the shading. Now we're gonna give it a sec for everything to pop in. This is where I'll, this one really starts to bog down. But again, there's like zero optimizations. I literally just open this file up. Perfect, and if we press play, you can see now we're getting, you know, a couple frames a second, if that, not super quick. And if we go to render, you know, it looks pretty good, but yeah, moving around the viewport is very laggy. But again, like I said, no optimizations whatsoever and not really indicative of real world use. Um, most computers I find will bog down quite a bit when you start doing this level of detail. What I want to show you is a more real world scenario, especially for someone like myself. So we're gonna go file, we're gonna open recent and we're gonna open this particle scene. So this is just a quick particle scene. Uh, something I know for a fact bogged down my M1 Mac mini because I tried to do the same sort of thing and it just wouldn't run this effect. So we're gonna go into shading. Let's just go to the end here. So it's pretty simple. We have a particle emitter here and then we have a reflective surface down at the bottom. We are using the EV renderer over here. And you can see that it's playing back almost real time, like 20, you know, 20 frames a second fast enough for real-time iteration, which is what I'm always talking about, right? You don't need it to be perfectly smooth. You just need to be able to make decisions on the fly. So if we want to say, you know, change this, let's go to the turbulence. And we're like, you know what? We're going to bump up the turbulence. We're going to go massive, super strong. And then we're going to go back, play again. We're like, yeah, you know what? That's not too bad. What we want to do now is we're going to, let's change the color. Right, we're gonna go here, go to the materials, and we're gonna make it like a pink kind of color. Just orange, do whatever we wanna do to create the effect. You know, press play. Hey, you know what? Let's increase the amount of particles. So if we go to the particle system here, currently only on 10,000, let's go to 50,000. And again, Still not like, you know, 10 frames, but still like I can move around the viewport. 
I can see the gist of what's happening and it is loading it into memory. So now I can play this bit back and get a good idea of what is happening, which is really what I want. And this 100% I could not do on the M1 Mac Mini. And I, you know, particles are things I really enjoy. So let's really take it to the next level. What we're gonna do is gonna go 200,000 particles. And I'm also gonna turn the turbulence right up. And as you can see now that even in the interface, it is really bogging down. So I'm gonna just bump that right up. And three, two, one. And even with 200,000 particles, we're still playing back and able to move around the viewport in a manner that is, I find acceptable for the sort of work that I do. Sure, it is a bit buggy. Yeah, I'm honestly pretty stoked with how this is working out. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you've got something away from this video. Pretty quick one, but yeah, just this is the base model. 14 inch and I figured it'd make sense to show how it operates with Blender. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos and I'll see you guys in the next video.